The Astrology of the Phoenix Phenomenon As a huge fan of Jason Brescia's research and his YouTube channel Archaeix, I've decided to put my astrology and video editing skills to work. Jason's always encouraging Aaron to spread the word and use our individual talents to empower others, so here goes. In this video, I'm decoding the astrology chart of the Phoenix Phenomenon. Using whole sign astrology, I'm digging into the Phoenix Phenomenon event. As it turns out, it truly is written in the stars. But first, let's do a recap of the Phoenix Phenomenon. The Phoenix Phenomenon is one of three different kinds of cataclysms. First, there's the Phoenix Phenomenon, second is the Nemesis X object and third is the Dark Satellite. The Phoenix Phenomenon is a weapon hidden in the sky that activates every 138 years on May 15th. The Phoenix Phenomenon does not affect the entire world every 138 years. It acts with discretion and intelligence. When it activates, somewhere in this world will experience its effects. It's like a huge wake-up call for that area of the world. The Phoenix Phenomenon can cause mud floods, red mud and dust falling from the sky, volcanoes, collapse of civilizations, resets, entire cities can sink into the ground, and mass human vanishings. Every time a Phoenix event occurs, humans see it coming. First, the red stars, astronomers call them variable stars, start flashing and get bright, then dim, then bright, then dim. Next, a fiery red dragon form appears in space. Sometimes it devours the sun or moon. Sometimes it darkens the sun and turns the moon red. Every time, it causes red dust and red mud to fall from the sky. Now, let's talk about the astrology of the Phoenix Phenomenon. In an Archaeix video titled, Astronicon 2046 Return of Nemesis X Object, Jason Brescius calls on astrologers to decode the astrology of the Nemesis X Object. That's me, I'm an astrologer. An Archaeix subscriber named Victoria did some brilliant decoding and found Pentagon, Pyramid and Cube shaping within the aspects of the astrology chart. She went on to point out that Saturn rules over 3D shapes, and the entire pattern forms an apex, which is ruled by Capricorn, and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Before I post about the Nemesis X object, I wanted to dig into the Phoenix phenomenon. The ancient Greek god Kronos rules Saturn according to Roman tradition, but Kronos is also considered its own hypothetical planet. In Greek mythology, Kronos was the king of the Titans. His mother was Gaia, Mother Earth, and his father was Uranus father sky first it's important to look at the chart of the last phoenix phenomenon which was on may 15 1902 what happened to humanity in 1902 let's take a look at the 11th house which rules humanity on may 15 1902 jupiter was in aquarius in the 11th house jupiter is the great benefic which expands wherever it goes and since the 11th house and aquarius rules technology jupiter helped in the expansion of technology for humanity as we know Many inventions burst onto the scene in 1902, such as the air conditioner and airplanes in 1903. But, the 11th house in the astrology chart of May 15, 2040 is much different. But first, let's dig into the astrological chart for the Phoenix phenomenon on May 15, 2040. When using the timing of 3.33 am local time for Giza, the chart reads as Taurus Sun, Cancer Moon, and Aries Rising. These are the big three of the chart. But as we dig deeper, we can see some big clues for this faded event. During this Phoenix event, Pluto is in the 11th house at 27 degrees. Pluto rules the Phoenix rising from the ashes, the Great Transformer. Pluto rules death and rebirth. Pluto is the Great Malefic, whereas Jupiter is the Great Benefic which was in the 11th house on May 15, 1902. Since Pluto rules the Phoenix and death, and it's in the 11th house of humanity, this is the first big clue. It is also noted that most of the planets, luminaries and variable stars are placed in the bottom quadrants. People with birth charts that look like this can be known to hide all their feelings and emotions and live their lives without any form of transparency. People with charts like this can get away with not showing their real self. So, right away, this seems like a sneaky or hidden force in the works. Now, let's look at what planets are in dignity, or at home, so to speak. Venus is dignified in Taurus. Mercury is dignified in Gemini, and the Moon is dignified in Cancer. Mercury is a neutral planet, and both Venus and the Moon are feminine energies, or at home and therefore working at their highest ability. The feminine energy is strong, and it seems like the return of the Goddess is written all over the stars. But we'll look at that more later in this video. Many of the planets, luminaries and variable stars are out of bounds. 
Anything over 23 degrees is considered out of bounds, and when they're out of bounds, they are considered also out of control. It's a let's wait and see what happens kind of energy. In the second house, the sun, at 24 degrees of Taurus, is conjunct, meaning close to, the non-existent planet Nibiru, also known as Planet X or Planet 9. Over history, people have called the Nemesis X object Nibiru. With Nibiru at the exact degree of the sun, this is an indication that the Nemesis X object is being activated six years later, when you break down the exact degree of Nibiru, 24 degrees, you add 2 plus 4 equals 6. Using the inside degrees theory of Elias Lonsdale, he says that 24 degrees of Taurus represents a man with no mouth. He goes on to describe 24 degrees of Taurus, nothing to say, everything to do. The self cannot be articulated because it is far too busily pressed out into emergency mobilization 24 hours a day. No personal life, no personal world, no personal self. Just fantastic availability to the call, the collective vigil, entered upon willingly and selflessly. The demands and rigors of this position and stance are punishing and extreme. You are so hard pressed, so rapidly attentive that nothing else exists. The assignment is clear, brutally so. Be on the spot at every level, maintain order, keep everything going and stay tuned to everything unusual and strange. Follow it out, keep it in your sights and make absolutely sure that you stay sober, integrity sworn and minutely diligent to hold the center and uphold the law with a steadfastness that is beyond belief, and simply true. The Sun, at 24 degrees of Taurus, is also conjunct the variable star Algol. Algol, known to the ancients as the Demon Star, sits at 26 degrees of Taurus. In Greek mythology, Algol represents Medusa. When she was decapitated by Perseus, her head had the power to turn men into stone. Jason Breshears of Archaeix says that the Phoenix phenomenon in 2040 is the return of the vapor canopy, which is the return of the matriarchy. As well, he says that every time a Phoenix event occurs, the red stars, astronomers call them variable stars, start flashing and get bright, then dim, then bright, then dim. Algol is the most commonly known variable star and it is hitting almost the exact degree of the Sun on May 15, 2040. Also in the second house, Venus is at 20 degrees of Taurus. Using Nikola Stoyanovich's degrees theory, 20 degrees is known as the death degree, and in astrology, Venus is known as the female planet that rules Earth. This could be interpreted as the feminine energy bringing death to the planet, which is ruled by the patriarchy. When we look at the fourth house, there are more conjunctions to take note of. With the Moon at 8 degrees of Cancer and Chiron at 9 degrees of Cancer, this is a powerful alignment. Using Nikola Stoyanovich's degrees theory, 8 degrees of Cancer rules family and 9 degrees of Cancer rules women. In astrology, the Moon rules the mother and our emotions while Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron is named after a Greek healer who was a master of the bow and arrow. Chiron is said to have lived with a wound for centuries, and he eventually learned to heal it. Since the fourth house represents the mother, family, properties, homes and ancestors, this conjunction of the moon and Chiron in the fourth house represents the wounds of women and family structures that have occurred in the patriarchy. Also in the fourth house, Uranus, the planet that rules liberation, shock, natural disasters, surprise, the internet, and overall shakeups is at 29 degrees of Cancer. This is the final degree and known as a critical or anoretic degree. It's a crisis-oriented point. With the planet that rules shocking events and natural disasters in the fourth house of home and family, this is another indicator of the Phoenix phenomenon. Also conjunct Uranus in the fourth house is Kronos at 25 degrees of Cancer. As mentioned, Kronos was the king of the Titans during a time of patriarchy. With both planets together at the end of degrees in Cancer, this can be interpreted as a powerful and shocking end of the patriarchy. Next door in the fifth house, Mars, the planet that rules war, fire, and the color red is at 6 degrees of Leo. Mars is conjunct the planet Killer Asteroid 2022 AP7. Showing up on the chart is west at 9 degrees of Leo, this can be interpreted as the war planet that rules red, red dust falling from the sky, and the planet Killer Asteroid to alter the sun, which rules Leo. Although they are not in the same house as Uranus, they are still conjunct, close B, to the planet that rules shocking events and natural disasters. Antares, the biggest red star, is at 10 degrees Sagittarius in the 9th house. It is conjunct the south node at 3 degrees of Sagittarius. 
The South Node is also referred to as Ketu in Vedic astrology. Considered to be malefic energy, Ketu represents that part of an astrology chart that has been there, done that. Ketu, or the South Node, represents what we've already mastered and this can be our comfort zone in this life if we don't look toward the North Node, or the North Star, meaning our future and the next levels of life. If people stay too long in South Node energy, they are unable to face their shadows and move toward the light. In other words, the South Node, or Ketu, is a strong indicator of the shadow work that needs to be done. This reminds me of what Jason always says, the Phoenix phenomenon will be a wake-up call to those who are not yet awake and living in the dark, or the shadows. For a deeper dive into the events of May 15, 2040, check out my video on the Phoenix phenomenon. And watch for my upcoming video on the astrology of the Nemesis X object. Calling on all astrologers, what else do you see in this chart? Please leave your feedback and suggestions in the comments below.